Okay. Well, welcome. Uh, I'm Deborah Valentine Smith. I'm the current president of AOBTA. Uh, I'm really happy that you could join us today for this presentation. Thank uh, you. Just a few housekeeping things here. Um, in this webinar, the participants are in listen mode only, so we can't see or hear you. Uh, you can submit questions to the presenter through the, uh, the chat function. Uh, and we will be collecting those. And Matthew Swigert, our communications director, will be um, fielding those and, and presenting them to Suzanne at the end. Um, um, this webinar is recorded and the recording will be made available to you after the webinar on the AOBT web, AOBTA website for those who are members and it's in the web, website calendar. So I'm very pleased to introduce Suzanne Yates, who is coming to us from Bristol in the UK. Um, she's an honorary AOBTA member, a shiatsu and massage therapist, childbirth educator, and founder of Well Mother, a team of teachers and practitioners whose mission is supporting the wisdom of parents and babies and all life cycles with shiatsu and therapeutic massage. Suzanne has been a popular presenter at AOBTA conventions and will be presenting a special post-convention seven-hour course at the convention uh, which is taking place in 2021. So stay tuned. Um, she came to this work in the 80s through her own experience with health issues and then through her own pregnancies. She's a pioneer in maternity massage and shiatsu. The first Well Mother course was offered in 1990 for parents and for professionals in 1999. Suzanne is also one of our AOBTA marketplace providers, and you can find her courses in the marketplace at aobta.org marketplace. She offers a 10% discount for AOBTA members. You can find out more about Suzanne and Well Mother and sign up for their newsletter at www.wellmother.org. So today's presentation will be about using the extraordinary vessels to nourish yin during these winter months. On the toolbar at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a box labeled chat. So please type your questions and comments throughout the presentation and there'll be time for Suzanne to respond at the end. So welcome Suzanne, we're so happy to have you here and I'll turn it over to you. Great. Well, thank you very much for inviting me and I look forward to sharing some of my knowledge about the extraordinary vessels with you and especially their deep nourishing yin qualities. So I'm just going to now go into sharing a screen because I have some presentations that I want to share with you. Um, so I think I'm sharing the screen now and then I have to go from the beginning. Oh, hang on. Share. And you will get my slideshow up, which I'll put onto full screen now. So from the beginning. Great. So as you can probably imagine, my from Deborah's introduction, my initial introduction to the extraordinary vessels was through working with pregnancy. And I've realized that that's the way that we can really understand the extraordinary vessels and also tap into understanding what this deepest yin aspect of them is because they are the dominant vessels when we are in the womb. And we see also, not just within the womb, but fairly soon after birth, we see how we hold a baby yin to yin, and we support the yin aspects first. And this imprinting that we have will impact us on, on us for the rest of our lives. And I want to show how we can also from my, my logo, the extraordinary potential, we can actually tap back into our potential to nourish ourselves, regardless of how we were nourished, it both in the womb and during the first year of our lives. Although, of course, if we are nourished in a really supportive, loving way, that is going to help us to connect with our yin perhaps more easily. So now I go on to the next slide. So the first thing I want to say is that um, my view on the extraordinary vessels is they are far more interconnected than a lot of other people uh, present them. I don't really see them as so separate 
and in fact their name actually does mean a network they are much more a network and if you look at this picture that i've got on the right hand side it's actually a picture of the yin linking vessel the yin way so a yin quality and what i'm showing in this image is that it's much more than just the points that we associate with it so i want to really show how this is really a very yin quality you can see it's on the yin side of the body it's really supporting all the organs in a very yin way i am working on uh, drawings of all eight of the extraordinary vessels so i would welcome your feedback on what you think about them to show what i see as their more fundamental nature which is much more broad and much more interconnected so i don't have the diagram of the chong or the penetrating vessel to show you or of the conception vessel um, but they will be coming Shortly, I hesitate to say shortly because it's taken me a long, long time to get this aspect of the, the drawings together because I realise it's all about also how do we support the yin from the earth? Which of the extraordinary vessels are a bit more connected to the earth and the yin support the earth, how we draw our nourishment from earth and also the more yang aspect of heaven and how that energy comes into our body. So what you will also see, though, in this diagram, uh, what I consider the four main organs of the extraordinary vessels, which we can connect with quite easily. And this is a way of, of drawing in in a very simple way. Probably, quite probably, many of you do this in your work anyway. Uh, we often do this with qigong or breathing. And the main organs being the kidneys and the essence, very yin nourishing quality of energy, and but also the fire within them. But that's a, a basic core support that we can draw upon that's yin, that's for me, for all of the extraordinary vessels, not just the yin ones. The brain, okay, isn't necessarily so yin, but of course it does have more yin qualities to it as well as yang. Nothing is ever only yin or yang, but the brain of course is a bit more yang. The heart, more yin than the brain, less yin than the reproductive organs and the um, kidneys. But the heart in its aspect of the extraordinary vessels very much linked with the Shen, but also the blood, that nourishing deep quality, again, a very nourishing aspect. And the reproductive organs, they can also nourish us. It's an aspect of obviously sexuality and reproduction, but it's a creative aspect of our being. And we can, by tuning into our reproductive organs, connect more inwards. I do just want to complete the picture that there are the other organs of the extraordinary vessels that we mustn't forget. I felt that to show them in a diagram would just overly uh, clutter the diagram, but blood vessels and and bone and the bone marrow, of course, are very connected anyway with the kidneys and with the heart. Gallbladder is a little bit on its own. I'm, it's a bit more yang. I'm not going to talk so much about gallbladder. Gallbladder is a bit more linked with the um, yang, extraordinary vessels. But of course, like with any organ, there is a yin quality to it. So the main shed organs, this is repeating, but I just want to now do a little bit of a simple visualization so that you can start to feel the qualities because I don't want this to just be a presentation where you are stimulated in your brain and more yang, but to go inwards. So I would like you to take a moment to just close your eyes and tune in to what you're feeling from having looked at this picture and tuning in to the more inner yin qualities of all of these four organs. And you may at this point want to place two hands over two of the organs. And it could be any of those two organs. Um, I quite often start with the most yin which is the reproductive organs, at least having one hand over the reproductive organs, that will help you get a very yin quality. So to connect with the reproductive organs, I suggest doing that by placing a hand just above your pubic bone and energetically connecting in. And as you're breathing out, just notice your breathing in fact. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that before. So just with your eyes closed, just focusing on your breath 
and allowing the out breath to take you in to your body and to connect to this deep yin nourishing aspect of your reproductive organs. Whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, to really connect with the internal aspects of your organs, the most deep yin hidden space. For women, that is going to be more inside the womb. For men, connect with whatever you feel, whatever aspect of your inside aspect. From where our creative yin energy arises, and from where we can really create and support ourselves. This yin support is not only to create a baby, but to nourish any creative aspect within ourselves. I'm feeling this deep in yin quality. The other hand may have been on your heart, feeling that yin support of the heart. Your other hand may have been over the kidneys, but especially over Ming Men, the gate of life, governing vessel four, really supporting the origin of our energy, the yin, the yin deep, but intermingled with the yang. The kidneys and the reproductive organs are the most yin aspect, and you may well feel a connection through to the earth, through the perineum, and the yin support of the earth. And at some point, perhaps placing a hand over the brain and feeling a bit more the yang quality of support coming from the heaven. But there's also a yin support from heaven too. I'll just give you a moment or two longer to really feel within your body the nature of the connections between all four of these organs and this most deep inward quality and allow yourself to be supported. And then gradually start to emerge from this deeper space within yourself and gradually opening your eyes. So that's a core quality which I want to access when I'm working with people in whatever aspect of the extraordinary vessels I'm working with, whether I'm working with points, whether I'm working with the pathway of the meridian, whether I'm connecting organs to try and feel this deep quality within. So another aspect of the extraordinary vessels that I now want to explain is, is this self-nourishing quality and the fact that we can nourish ourselves from within whatever is going on in the outer world and the outer environment. And that's quite important for us to be able to do, especially in the times when the outer environment may not be so supportive for us, that we can go inwards and we can draw back into ourselves. This is actually a quality of all the extraordinary vessels. I will also show how it's a quality, perhaps more of the conception vessel, but we can't separate them off, as I was saying. So going back to our origin, we all know the origin of all our energy is at conception, but in the first week, What's happening is that we're spiraling down the fallopian tube. So I think I can get an arrow here to show the ovaries, the fertilized egg, the oocyte, and how it just spirals. So it's actually not growing in size at all. And we, act, we in fact, so this is the first thing I'm going to say, it's dividing, but it's not changing in size because it doesn't need any nourishment from the outside. And this is how we can connect back into this self-nourishing quality. And we do have a strong boundary. Uh, we are you know, an egg with a shell. The shell's name is actually the Zona Pellucida. Um, and, but, and so we are nourishing ourselves from within. And that's why babies can grow in test tubes. The thing that they're missing though is we're nourishing, but in this 
case we're actually moving and we're spiraling and this is a quality of the extraordinary vessels and this is what i uh, show in the diagrams a spiraling quality so continuing with this spiraling quality i want to just connect with a visualization of that you might want to just go back to this sense of again just briefly closing your eyes is building on a bit on the previous meditation and just closing your eyes connecting with what we connected to and kind of taking that image of the fertilized egg and all the potential of who you are and that you're safe and protected with this zona pellucida and outer layer and that you're spiraling you might even feel the spiraling movement down the fallopian tube and eventually you will come to anchor but for the moment you're connecting with your capacity to nourish yourself independently of what's going on outside so just stay with that image and i like to talk about a resource that we can connect with through this i am all i need i am whole within myself and i have the capacity to support and maintain myself independently from my external environment the challenge of this is to be able to connect with my potential without it being li limited so sometimes our potential can feel limited by our ancestral energy or the place we were conceived but remember that we always have the capacity to choose to create our own reality connect with that powerful aspect of the extraordinary vessels and then gradually when you feel ready feeling that nice safe protection that you have there's many images that people have for this maybe you have an image of what that your shell what your zone of pellucida looks like now in the current moment it could be a light it could be something physical a texture and then just allow your eyes to open and then you can maybe read what i've just read out to you. the resources are i am all i need and the challenges uh, yes that often we can feel limited by the parents that we have by ancestral patterns all of that the jing aspect the place where we i believe chose on some level our soul choice to be conceived so that's why i've, put, I've chosen but we've chosen a place because it's going to give us certain influences but regardless we can always have the capacity to choose to create our own reality so the next slide is showing again i love i love embryology i initially got into embryology and studying life in the womb because i wanted to understand more how i could help my clients connect with what was going on and support their connection with their baby because this is the first yin support the womb is the most yin time of our lives we're floating in water in the amniotic fluid but even before that we're cells bathed within water that's why water is such a powerful image of yin support water in the womb is warm water so we see here the first cell divisions is what's happening when we were going down this fallopian tube the early days this is actually within the first few days it's very interesting and i think sometimes people talk about the extraordinary vessels they see ah oh, first we have two cells then we have four cells then we have eight cells and they think oh yeah the first two that's yin and yang that's governing conception then the next four maybe that's penetrating and girdle then eight but actually it's not like that because any of these eight cells can actually become anything within our body there's no differentiation at this point and for me this shows the interconnectedness that and this is why as we'll see later in the show that you can actually work with any of the vessels and it will tap into the energy of all the other seven because they are so closely connected and actually they will form not only anything within our body but they can also form anything that is in within our support structures and the support structures are essentially the placenta i'm going to get a bit more into the support because i think to understand 
how we were supported in the womb can help us understand how we can support ourselves and receive and nourish ourselves after birth as well. So the interesting thing on the slides on the left now in the blue is that what you see all around the outside, it's kind of like a ring. I think you can probably hopefully see this ring of cells around the outside. It's called the trophoblast. I had to use images that were not limited by copyright. So I've been a bit limited in the other images. There, there are clearer ones, but you can see the trophoblast that will become essentially the placenta, the blastocyst or the inner cell mass. Still, that can become any part of our inner body. So there's not yet an emergence of any of the eight extraordinary vessels. They're all interconnected and together. And so, but, then we do start to get differentiation and I'm looking first at our inner body. This is a bit later on. So we can see quite clearly, and I think probably quite a lot of you are familiar with these three germ cell layers, which I'm going to talk about a bit more later, the endoderm, the mesoderm and the ectoderm. But if you're looking at this picture, the inner body, so it started off as cells that could become anything starts to differentiate. This is at three weeks after conception. And you can see a red, you can see a yellow, and you can see a blue. That's the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. So now, the endoderm is the conception vessel, and this is the yellow. And part of the conception vessel has a yolk sac, kind of, you know, an egg with a yolk, and that's the sac that nourishes us while we're setting up our external support from the external body, which is through blood. And that's all this blood around the edge. So those cells around the edge now become blood and they start to go into our mother's womb. And it's through blood that we take in our nourishment from outside. But we also still take our nourishment from inside. And I want to show that, again, don't forget the interconnectedness. All of the vessels give us support. But we could say here is the first arrival of the conception vessel in a more physical, tangible form. That's the yellow, the endoderm. The blue, the red is the mesoderm, which is the penetrating vessel. And the blue is the governing vessel. And that's the more yang. And what we have to remember external structures that support us well the yolk sac is kind of outside our body but it's part of the inner body and the amniotic sac actually arises from the inner body and that's the fluid that supports us so the amniotic fluid is kind of part of our inner body and that's why we can have this image of of water being this yin yin support even though it's more on the outside and it's more connected with the governing vessel, but it's still yin and supporting us. And the yolk sac, which is yellow, is at the front of our body, connected more to the conception vessel and also supports us. So again, I'll put the outer body forms our support structures, the placenta and the fetal membranes. And it, remember, in origin, it's all of the eight extraordinary vessels, but you can see that it starts to become quite linked with blood, those of you who know your penetrating vessel, your chong, you know that blood is a bit more linked to chong. We will come back to it. It's quite a lot of information on one slide, I know. But get this idea of the inner body and the outer body and how they're beginning to kind of show their natures more specifically. But that we remember these structures. They were there. They supported us. That's why I say disappearing support. But we still have the memory of this. So visualization here is that I want you to just connect a bit close your eyes because now you've seen the images I often find that the images actually stimulate some memory of this connection so just tuning in and feeling this image of the front of your body which is actually more on the outside the ecto the endoderm actually is a bit more on the front the outside and the yolk sacs at the front, you might even kind of visualize this, even placing your arms in front of your body, a space in front of your body that's a nourishing space, like a yolk sac of the egg. And we can really take this nourishment 
and it's very much connected to conception vessel, the cells that will form that are part of the conception vessel. And this is going to be our digestive tract. So really feel how we can kind of nourish ourselves from ourselves without needing support from the outside. This is still continuing through the conception vessel. We're just connecting with that for a moment. And then you can gradually open your eyes. And then that's conception vessel. Now I say, as I said, it's all of the vessels, but it's quite closely linked to conception vessel. Conception vessel is only in the midline of our body. It has no parts of its pathway in the legs and with the outer world. So I see it as a bit more connected with conception vessel, the yolk sac. But the outer body, I think this is really interesting. The outer body, we see how it's now developed into the placenta. And that's the main source of the, the yolk sac has now disappeared. The, what's happened to the yolk sac is it's gone. Part of it's just disappeared. Part of it's gone inside our body and becomes part of the digestive tract, which is very much linked with the conception vessel. And part of it becomes part of the umbilical cord. So you actually get quite a lot of interconnections of energies at the navel. So I deliberately didn't talk about the navel for the yolk sac because it's more than that. But the navel, we might think of, oh, conception vessel A, connection to the amniotic, um, not sorry, not to the amniotic, except to the, the cord. And that attaches us to the placenta conception vessel. But it's actually more than conception vessel because you've got the navel around the navel, the amniotic, uh, the cord, and that's going to be taking blood into our body. And that's going to link more with the blood, the circulation, the mesoderm and the penetrating vessel still got all the connections of all of them it's a bit more the penetrating vessel and that's how i see a bit the difference with penetrating and conception that penetrating vessel yes there is that self-nourishing quality but penetrating vessel has branches in the legs and is a bit more connected with the outer world and earthing and anchoring and in fact it's through the blood vessels and through the placenta that we anchor into our mother's uh, womb and that we become stable we stop spiraling this is the penetrating i also put girdle girdle is often not linked with um, the different cell layers because i think it actually contains them all it's a very complex vessel with the yin and yang aspects and contains aspects of all of the vessels so uh, this is what i was saying blood we're anchoring through blood which is more closely linked to penetrating vessel and penetrating vessel has branches in the legs. So you might want to just now close your eyes and just see that image of from our outer body, this, this egg that we had, we're starting to make little blood connections. It starts with blood cells and then they connect into the womb and then we settle and we anchor. You might want to, as you're sat on your chair, just feel this anchoring movement within your legs. Feeling a movement of how from the centre you're connecting down through your legs to hopefully you are resting your feet on the floor. And you can feel that yin support of the floor of the earth, especially through kidney one, which is one of the main points on the penetrating vessel in the leg branch. But knowing that this first connection was burrowing down into our mother's womb. Now, depending on whether our mother's womb was a safe space or not, we may or may not want to connect with that memory of the mother's womb and the blood. If you don't want to connect with that memory, just connect with this movement down in your leg. Yin coming to land on the earth and how you can draw the support from the earth. Now you're taking in energy like the roots of a tree from the earth and then gradually open your eyes again so coming back to the same slide again i just wanted to summarize really some of what i said and just so it kind of stays in your mind that the endoderm is really the yin all the functions of the endoderm here i want to 
show you it's the digestive system it's the liver it's the pancreas it's the lungs the regu main regulating point for those who know it of the conception vessel lung seven conception vessel is a lot about regulating our digestive system interesting because the chinese the ancient chinese did not know these three germ cell layers but they talk about all the things they're talking about what the extraordinary vessels are regulating relate to this the ectoderm the germ, germ the cells of the ectoderm layer will become the nervous system but also outer layers of the body hair outer layers of protection and skin and that's very related to what the governing vessel but also you have the memory of the amniotic sac and the mesoderm this is why I have said the mesoderm for me is a lot more connected with the placenta because it's about blood, as you probably, a lot of you know, sea of blood. And we know that the ectoderm layer becomes the circulatory system, blood. It's also linked with lungs. Interesting, the inner, the lining of the epithelial layers of the lungs, the slightly outer layers of lining. Again, there is overlap with the extraordinary vessels, skeletal system and muscular system system well the nervous system as you know the governing vessel is very connected with the spine but the penetrating vessel also supports the spine so there's all these overlaps and i think it's really fascinating how the chinese kind of knew this dye i think is linked with all of them i kind of already referred to that it has both yin and yang aspects to it so another thing I'll explain this quite briefly because I don't want to go into a practical at the end is that I couldn't find a slide that really explains this in a very clear way that wasn't copyright protected or wasn't a video and you might just need to visualize this I'll and because this slide is slightly limited I'll explain it first and then we'll just visualize it I might show with my hands basically the endoderm e, endoderm ectoderm and mesoderm we're still quite flat so we're like a flat disc but then we take weeks from four to eight we curl around so you might maybe in your chair just sit imagine that you're flat and then imagine that you curl around into the fetal position and as you're curling around the conception vessel which kind of was a bit more at the front goes inside and becomes the most yin and the governing vessel which is at the back is actually going all around and then the amniotic sac is part of the governing vessel and the, the penetrating vessel is sort of in between the two within our body as it also is within its pathway and then but it's also really connecting outwards through the blood so this is quite a complex just feel the movements i think that's probably enough for now feel this complex movement and kind of imagining you're in the womb but then what do we do we spend the rest of our life from the fetal position till we're born in this position and then in the first year of our life it takes us a year to unfold and then we come back to the upright position with our feet on the earth and our head in heaven so basically all the relationships are changing and this is why when we want when we're working with the extraordinary vessels we do want to feel this sort of spiraling interconnected curling inwards moving outwards a broad kind of support so why I'm now wanting to show you this is the fetal position. We haven't got the outer body, we're now just focusing on the inner body. But the thing that I find is really fascinating with this is, look how the hand is very well developed, but the arm, mm, not very much, and the shoulder, kind of not at all. And similarly with the leg, you can't see the foot quite so clearly. But we all know that points on the hand and points on the feet do connect back to the center and this is why you can actually see how the hands are kind of sat on top of the heart and how the heart is against the brain and really how big the brain is and how we're all midline and this is really what I call you know that's that's the physical development of the governing conception 
deep penetrating and the girdle and then the penetrating is this first movement into the feet but that's really how we i i explain how the regulating points help us connect back in because by working with the heart we can connect back in by working with the yin aspect of the hand we can connect really back into this deep yin aspect I love that picture. Anyway, so how we have the connection to the center. To, so you can see really, I think physically, the stepping and the wear and the um, linking, so the heel and the um, the way and the chow, the stepping and the linking, the heel, are not really that developed much in a physical form. Although they were all in the early cells, they're not really that developed. So again, the 12 channels, not so developed. I mean, yes, the organs are there at this stage, but the brain is the biggest organ. That's an organ of the extraordinary vessels, the eye and the hands. And that's a good picture for me of like how we really support our yin and our growth and development and our potential. So the hands are growing out of the chest. That's why we have the heart meridian in the hand, you know, and the heart points in the heart. The heart is close to the brain. They are the first organs actually to really develop. And in fact, the heart is an early organ. At three weeks already, the heart in a primitive form exists and is beating and is pumping blood around the body because blood is our main source of nourishment. And the feet grow out of the pelvis, so they have a close connection to the reproductive organs, the kidneys, and then the outer four, the way and the chow, but also penetrating vessel. It's the only one of what I call the core for to have a path in the legs so the regulating points are on the hands and the feet so I the list is here you can when you've got the the video you can pause it I'm just going to focus on the conception the yin ones conception vessel main regulating point lung seven that connection with the lungs with the heaven with a metal energy a condensing energy of how we can draw the yin from the heaven into our body as, as maybe some of you know, the image for metal is energy of the air coming in and then there's the gold in the house. How we make, condense this energy into gold. That's a good support. And penetrating vessel. We see that much more earthy connection. Its regulating point is in the feet, spleen four. That's why you have also that connection back to the reproductive organs quite directly. And then paired with the yin heel, kidney six, foot yin water earth, heart protector six, supporting the fire. I, I want to reg it, show the points because they are an important way of working with the extraordinary vessels, the regulating points. And what I want to show is, and this will be my last bit because I'm aware that I'm coming up to the time. Um, I'll start with the supporting the feet and the hand points because if we're supporting this deeper yin, which is all very well to do on ourselves, and I know that we do a lot with horror assessment, and but actually it can be too much for people to go straight to these really core yin areas of the body. And that's why I love the regulating points of the extraordinary vessels. They're really powerful and we can support with, I can't remember if I, yeah, um, spleen for, did I put, I think I've got heart protector six. Yeah. If we're focusing on the yin, I mean, I haven't actually put all the points here, but yin conception vessel, lung seven. So we can hold lung seven. You might want to hold lung seven yourself now and really feel how that does connect you into yin. And that's a good way of getting some yin support. If you're in a situation where you can't have a, go into a deep visualization or have a deep shiatsu, just holding lung seven. And the feet points, spleen four, that's supporting the penetrating vessel. And heart protector six is supporting um, the yin linking. So on the previous one, I'm just aware I'm a bit running out of time. Um, there's a main point and then there's a paired point. So the main point, spleen four, is for penetrating vessel, heart protector six. Its main point is yin. So I want to finish with just actually getting you to feel how, in fact, you can work several vessels um at the same time it's not muddly that's why i've spent time showing you the interconnectedness so 
I often put my mother hand, so I'm going to talk you through this, put your mother hand at Ming Men and feel that kidney support. So basically put a hand at Ming Men and then with your other hand, bring it to the front of your body and really connect with the whole of your abdomen. The only reason I've just got this picture of the yin way is because that's the only one I have. Um, so just connect with the whole of your abdomen. And then if you feel the more outer parts of the abdomen, uh, the, the most yin the most outer yin that's part of the girdle vessel isn't it so the girdle vessel well the girdle vessel is all of the front but you've got the girdle vessel has the outer yin but also is all of the girdle and then if you come further in you've got these spleen points which i'll show here all along the spleen line that's actually the outer border of the recti muscle so muscular support that's that's the yin way and that's the outer support and then the penetrating vessels the inner border so you could connect with those often i work by my thumb and my index finger especially as i get to the the yin way and the penetrating that i'm really supporting so really connect your outer recti muscles then gradually the inner recti muscles and then gradually the center so all of these work together to support the center they're supporting the yolk sac they're supporting the placenta it's a different way that we can access all these memories the, and the chinese called the reptile muscles the ancestral muscle which has a strong support for the reproductive organs and it's a way of accessing the deep yin so this is my summary. We can connect with the organs as a deep reservoir and memory of womb connections, the most yin aspect of our lives. Regulating points is a way that we can kind of perhaps more sometimes safely connect with these deeper energies, the deep nourishment to the womb and visualizations and touch can help us remember our yin nature. And so here is pictures of in, in pregnancy I encourage partners to work with connecting with the baby the womb the heart so that baby in this picture is hopefully receiving all this yin support so that's the end of my presentation and uh, I hope I've left enough time for some questions and thank you for listening to me Thanks, Suzanne. That was wonderful, um, and certainly a, a good good time to have that kind of information for ourselves personally as well. So we're going to go into the question and answer period, and um, I want to introduce uh, Matthew Swigert, who is our director of communications, who has been fielding all those questions and uh, is now going to let us know what people have been commenting and asking. Well. At this point, we don't have any questions uh, from the attendees. If anyone would like to chime in, now would be a good time. I, I personally had a question. Uh, I was intrigued by the, uh, it's like the conception vessel first. And I, I, well, I, actually, oh, there's a question just coming in. But let me complete my, yeah. my thought. Uh, there's something that Jeffrey uh, teaches about the the uh, Chiang Mai being the vessel of the blueprint. And it seemed like in your presentation, you were talking a little bit more about the conception vessel being the first. Yes, no, this is something I could talk a lot more about. Yeah. Um, I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. And I know that image, and it's really in the, in the Taoist symbol, isn't it? That the Chong, because it contains both yin and yang, is what oh. can enable so this is preconception really ah. say that the chong in the preconception is what brings the egg and the sperm together and the yin and the yang but even more than that i think the yin and the yang of the universe come together through the chong so i i do feel that that could be what happens because the chong is both but then in physical form and that's what I was describing there it is actually the conception vessel and the governing vessel that differentiate first but they're all there and all connected before that initial differentiation I would say though because I'm 
I've been pondering this for years and I am familiar with the work of Jeffrey Yuang. And so I'm very, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. I'm very excited to be coming because he's there, because he's really supported me through reading his lectures um, in my understanding. And I know that a lot of people call the conception vessel, the vessel of bonding. For me, that isn't how I feel it. I feel the penetrating vessel is much more the vessel of bonding. And if you look at the pathway and how it, it is, it's in the breast. You've got all the breast channels. You've also got this connection through the legs, which is that that's what I was getting you to feel really with that placenta and how the for me it's the chong that really contains that energy of coming to earth. So I suppose in a way that is also the blueprint. Although I could argue that all of them, you know, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. They're actually all interconnected. They're all really the blueprint, but the, yeah. the, so the Chong is more dependent on the outer world. And for me, that shows through both its pathway, you know, breast, but also that it's anchored to the earth. It's got a more of a connection outward spleen and conception is more in the, in the center. So they do work together. They overlap a lot. But I still feel that for me, if I was to call one of them the vessel of bonding, it would be the penetrating vessel, not the conception vessel. <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. There is a question here from Kim Purdy. She wants to thank you very much. And then also asks, what about death? What vessels are the best to treat the dying? Ah, the dying. Yes. Well, this is really interesting. I see that it basically kind of goes in reverse. So we first need to let go of our connection to the earth. So we kind of have to do what I showed you at the beginning in reverse. So we need to withdraw from our connection with the outer world. So for me in the extraordinary vessels, our connection with the outer world in a more direct way is the way and the chow. So the stepping and the linking vessels, um, they have slightly different connections with the outer world, but as of course the stepping is probably one of the first to withdraw, isn't it? Because it's as we're stepping on the earth, it's very immediate and, and we want to withdraw that connection. So we need to let go of the stepping. We need to kind of not be encouraging people to anchor essentially and draw up back to the center. And then we've also got the way we often that's seen as the way is like how we're anchoring to the earth too. The, the one of the images for that is like, the feathers of a bird, the tail of a bird, which which is like a net from heaven that anchors us, that combines with the yin stepping, the yang and the yin and the yang stepping. So they all need to come back to the centre, and so then then we've got to support the chong to come back to the centre. So actually, we then need to work up the chong rather than down the chong. So usually, when I'm working with people in that are, I'm wanting to help be more anchored, I'll work down the chong because I'm expressing that first movement to connect with the earth. But if we're wanting to leave the earth, then we want to be working back up the penetrating vessel back. And then, yeah, then withdrawing really from the do the ren and the chong and the dai and, and connecting more with this sort of upper quality and going into the hands and the heaven and emerging back into space. Hmm. So then effectively you're working all the vessels to treat the dying, just moving in reverse. <laughs> yeah, step, step, step. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I suppose, yes, it depends with each person, what's stopping them from leaving, uh -huh. what can help them. So the stepping to let go of that connection through the foot, yeah. let, letting go of the connection to the earth. I mean, again, it's like I said in, the, in this beginning thing, they're really all interconnected, so they all need to let go. But the ones that are most connected with heaven and are more ethereal, I suppose you could say are the, the uh, for me, actually the do and the ren. Because mm -hmm. uh, they've got their regulating points are more heavenly. But I don't think you can really say there's only one. Does that sort of make yeah, sense? Makes sense, yeah. yes. Uh, another question's come in from Joanne Lindbergh. She says, I remember the holds from your work and use them often with clients. I love the mystery and magic of conception. 
I fear that forcing these processes may leave those babies deficient in some way. You mentioned test tube babies. Uh. <laughs> it horrifies me as it may subvert natural processes. So, it's a, Yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I mean, I'm always really careful how I phrase these things because I think our, we have to look at what our role is. And for me, our role is to support people with where, with what the reality is that's that's going on for them. And so, if someone is conceiving with support, and the conception happens outside the womb, yes, the, the baby is missing out on that spiraling down the fallopian tube. Conceptions happening without connection in a more mechanical way but they're blueprints and we I, I feel rather than not you know what do we then do if that's how someone's chosen to, con to conceive then I support I try and support them they right. they kind of need more support don't they more helping the baby to connect right. but yes the, the side of it is that often people aren't connected there's often a lot of fear and disconnection that's going on at that time so, so you could use extraordinary vessels to remediate that yes that, and that's what i do and that's why i work a lot with the extraordinary vessels to kind of give, give that energy to the baby during even i work with parents when the baby's in the laboratory to help them to energetically connect with the baby mm -hmm. so that it's all more done with awareness if that path has gone down. I mean, there's, I do have a lot of reservations about it though and, and feel that people need more support to be connected in those situations and often they don't get, they get less support because they're often fearful because they often get caught in a whole medical system which is quite can be quite deep mm -hmm. connecting so work with people and then but be aware that if you work with adults who have been conceived outside the womb see how they're expressing that energy i mean it can always be made up i think this is what i emphasize to people when i'm working with clients you saw, hopefully, you know, that yin to yin bonding that happens when a mother holds a baby uh, against her afterbirth. And well, even during the whole of the rest of the time in the womb, after that initial conception, the mother can be bonding and connecting with her baby and making up that yin support and afterbirth as well. So there's not one moment when we get that yin support. Each, it's a series and we, we have many opportunities where we can support the yin and connection and bonding yeah and you're bond. reminding you're reminding me of the cross patterning exercises and yeah you know that if you did not crawl when you were a baby well then when you're a teenager you do cross patterned exercise and it goes back yeah. to remediate that missing yeah. stage yeah so I find that this is also important with holding in shiatsu, mm -hmm. holding these points where we're remediating what might have been missing in those early stages. Yeah, totally. I mean, when I work with people, we never, I, I think that the beauty and the safety of shiatsu is the body will only ever do what it is ready to, to do and process. But sometimes when I work with people with the chong, if they're ready, they, they may well go back into being reborn and relive, re, well, transforming their birth experience and connecting with it in a different way. Even if they're whatever age, 60, 70, it's never too late. We always have that capacity to transform what we physically lived and to understand it in a more conscious way when we're ready to do that. And that for me is the power that whatever happens, we can remediate it. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of people do have issues around bonding. I mean, even if it was, if see, this is the thing, if it, even if it was, if it was a natural conception, it could have been through rape or through aggression 
unwanted pregnancies, women not wanting to have their babies, then the baby's absorbed all of that. So it's not necessarily natural is good and artificial is not good because again, people conceiving uh, with medical support are doing it, a lot of people are doing it with consciousness and awareness. So that mediates it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, we still have time for more questions. We still have five minutes on the clock here, which if you've ever listened to a news broadcast, they put a lot into five minutes. Yeah, we can have a whole other presentation. <laughs> hey, Matthew. Yes. I wanted to point you to, to two questions in the chat room. Yeah. Oh, I've been in the Q&A. I see. Let's go over ah, there and see yeah. what's over there. Oh, there's 10 in the chat. Ah, here we go. Uh, there are lots of questions. Uh, what's happening? Oh, here we go. Okay, thank you so much. Over we go. Interested in your view of marrow from Cindy Banker, maybe especially in regard to the brain and any connection throughout the skeletal system. What, in terms of the... Um, I'm interested in your view of marrow in regard to the brain and the connection throughout the skeletal system. In in what respect, though? I mean, that, that's that for, that's kind of like all the. Ex so that's why I don't link it to one of the extraordinary vessels. I link it to all of the extraordinary vessels. So yeah, when we're working, the the organ connections that I've done, yeah, I sometimes I do with the bones and with the marrow and and connect with yeah with the 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 feeling of the marrow within the bones and the bones themselves i especially do i find well i can connect that with governing vessel with for the spine especially for penage for girdle vessel for the whole bones of the pelvis for the linking and the stepping and even the chong it's the bones of the legs but also the bones of the shoulders and the hips and, and the arms. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people say, why are there not pathways in the arms? For me, there are pathways in the arms because there's the connection between the shoulder and the hands and the regulating point in the hands. So the connecting with the bone marrow, were you asking whether it was specifically one of the vessels? For me, it's not one of the vessels. It's, that's why it's a shared organ. It's all of the vessels. And some of them regulate the bone marrow, which is also quite closely linked with blood. And therefore bones are also quite closely linked with the muscles. But I might, I mean, often we say that the bones, the stepping vessels are a bit more connected with the bones and the linking vessels are a bit more connected with the muscle. Um, that's what we was doing with the abdominal muscle. For mm. me, that's a lot the yin way but it does have some aspects of the yin stepping. I don't know if I've answered the question because I, I was That's probably a pretty good uh, review. Uh, and if Cindy asks for any more quali uh, qualifications of that, we can ask her to double back in. But uh, we have another question here from Nicole. Oh yeah, I saw about the perineum and drawing up. Yeah. And, yes. So this is, I mean, we could all do this. This might be quite a nice way to end because you've only got a minute or so. Right. But you could just all close your eyes and then place a hand on your pubic bone and a hand on your coccyx. And as you breathe out, really feel how the out breath draws, basically contracts, but I like to say draws in the pelvic floor and the abdominal muscles. And then on the in breath, you feel more a lengthening of those muscles. So with the out breath, you can draw up the pelvic floor and you can draw in the lower abdomen. And with the in breath, feel them releasing. So you can take that to spend longer. If you were spending longer, you would draw on the out breath, draw everything basically in. And then you can start to visualize more internally the pelvic floor coming up internally to support the reproductive organs you can have images with that some people i know like to have an image of like the flower of life that and the spiraling movement we haven't talked about the warp and weft of the the extraordinary vessels that network of holding everything together but see all the muscles in their warp and weft this sort of fabric of the pelvic floor 
drawing up inside whatever image that comes to you take it inside you might even take it higher up into the abdomen and it does connect even with the heart and even ultimately with the brain and can release great and that's a very simplified version of that but at least get that idea of out breath drawing up yeah, beautiful. But yes, it is a contraction. To answer, it is a contraction of the perineum. So usually I start with that physical movement of really feeling on the out breath that the muscles draw in and contract. And then I might use whatever images feel appropriate to the client and take it more into an internal connection. Great. Well, thank you so much, Suzanne. This has been really great. And uh, people who are here, remember that uh, Suzanne's paper on this has a whole lot more detail and you can look at that. Uh, you can also review the recording on our website in the calendar, aobta.org. And uh, we really hope that you will stay tuned for also the further webinars. We're planning on a webinar a month. Great. So, thank you so much. Thank you for- thank you. thank you for inviting me. We look forward to seeing you in 2021. 2021. So it will go by quickly. So enjoy as it is the yin, we're drawing in, I meant to start with the drawing in of the solstice and the yin and the darkness, we're in the dark here. So use some of these resources of the extraordinary vessels, the most deep yin, to support you in your process of drawing in and hopefully not getting, being able to nourish yourself in all the busyness that's going on outside, which we can nourish ourselves through our connections with people but also we might want to take time to be more yin and nourish ourselves from within. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.